Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Amit Singh, and I am the CEO of Alcor. Evolve, Alcor's very own digital series, launches today. It gives me immense pleasure to kickstart this series among this global audience and our own Alcor family. With open arms and much warmth, I take this opportunity to welcome you all. I couldn't have asked for anything better to light up the lamps of this event designed to share knowledge. Then to start it today with our esteemed guest, Sanjay Singh, a global thought leader and a voracious thinker in his own right. With an exemplary journey of many years at Procter & Gamble, Sanjay is the Vice President, CIO of Asia Pacific, India, Middle East, and Africa region. An alumni of IM Calcutta, he started off in IT at PNG and built an illustrious career at one of the most prestigious organizations we all know about. Focused on constantly driving value, productivity, and growth in all areas of IT. His experience probably uh, covers anything that we have known uh, from early days of, of computers coming up when IT became information technology to digital transformation that today's session is about. Before we start the session, I would just like to inform everyone that post the conversation with Sanjay, we will take up a quick Q&A from the audience. So in case you have anything to ask, please feel free to drop it in the Q&A section. You should see a button on your screen and we will try to pick it up. Thank you. So Sanjay, how are you today? I mean, thanks. And first of all, uh, that's a gracious welcome. And I really want to first say good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever any one of the audience is, right? And that's the new world we live in. Uh, doing absolutely well. Uh, in spite Absolutely. of our completely dramatically opposite time zones. Yes, yes, I am at 7 a.m. time in my zone, and I think you are at 10 p.m. in your zone. Absolutely. It's the start of the day, as I call it. <laughs> Wonderful. So to, to start the session, uh, the way we formatted that as a dialogue, so folks can you know uh, sort of enjoy the dialogue between us, and uh, really would love to uh, you know, start off with, uh, with a simple question, well, at least seemingly simple, but really according to you, uh, what does digital transformation really mean for today's business leaders? I mean, that's phenomenal that you ask this question and I do that to myself over my journey of call it 27 years because the meaning of the word digital itself has changed, right? And hence then, becomes the question, what is the transformation we are engaged in? Now in today's world, one of the fascinating things how I describe digital is it ought to have really three important components. If you pin it down into three words of simplicity, one is really it is powered by data. That's the core. The second, I mean, you can do it data, but you can be at, uh, you can't go to the limits of it if you don't put automation on it. Right? right, Automation is where algorithms come in, whether you know the business process or any kind of automation. And the third, you can do these two. But so was it being done in 90s with these two in its own way. The third big thing comes is the user experience. That are you creating a new outcome or a new delightful outcome, or at least maintaining it? And when you combine the three things, there is a magic that it produces. This. Now, when we take that first definition of what is digital to the simplicity of the three vectors, they go on hyper steroid, as I call it, from that point onwards, because of the advent of technology. And we are still at the beginning or the mid cycle of technology, as whatever you may want to guess. But the vectors ought to remain the same. They just get better and better and connected. Now, whether you are a government or, or you are an 
uh, enterprise, or you are any kind of an entity. Essentially, we have to look back as what products and services are we here to create, to create newer delight, newer value to the outcomes. And then becomes the question that from where I am or where my corporation is to create those outcomes, where do I want it to be? And that is the journey of digital transformation, that digital is a steroid that is available in today's world that is ever changing. And it's a positive steroid, as I call it. When you inject that in, that from where we are to where we need to go is the process, it's a journey. And it's about getting the thrill out of this journey. Very well said. And, and it's, it's very often that we think of digital in terms of technology, in terms of, uh, you know, sometimes in terms of data, uh, but I, very well said, really the, the, the delightful user experience, the, the, the speedway that the three of them build together, you know, uh, that really is the, is the key change that drives transformation. Uh, so thank you, great, great answer. Uh, so leading on uh, with that, uh, Sanjay, do you think that digital transformation is fundamentally changing how the business creates value? You know, not just how the business is done, but how the business creates value. And how do you see the scope for it, you know, tomorrow and then the near future to come? It's, uh, it's great, Amit, you are asking that because the way I always tend to think of it as I look back, and that gives me a lot of uh, lessons into not from what I have experienced or done or, or my corporation or my teams, but what is the world doing? And if we look back, we all know some of the examples that a book selling company became Amazon and transformed itself yeah. into what buying would be. A video retailer became Netflix and what it starts to give as precision based, where you are, who you are, and the entertainment brought to you individually. One of the most recent examples, we all are living still in COVID. And we have seen immense vectors of digital being applied by the governments across the world and the people. I'll give an example of what uh, many countries have done, but uh, as I'm close to it, I'll, I'll tell that, that what digital has done to create, not only creating vaccine, and I'll leave that out, but making that vaccine available at precision with agility and at lowest cost to each and every person if you look at like in India, you start to create scale like 25 million a day that you can achieve. Now, two decades ago, this would have costed a bomb or one may not even have dreamt. And those simplistic examples is why I bring it back to the question you asked, that what is digital creating? It essentially creates value. That is the only purpose of existence for digital. And that is very important to understand because many a times we start with a digital strategy, but then I call saying that's not a strategy. Digital yes. is your biggest lever. Yes. It's your lever to fundamentally solve the problems. And once you start to identify each and every problem and keep solving it via the biggest lever you have on hand, which is digital, things start to look simple. And it mm -hmm. always creates value. It has to always create value. Digital is not a cost. Digital is not a denominator. It is inside the value. And that is very, very important construct. So I am a fundamental believer. There is digital and value are two sides of the same coin. It's very, very interesting perspective, Sanjay. And, and, and I also agree with that part I, completely. It's, uh, it's, it's not a strategy alone. Strategy is really to, to execute the digital transformation, but digital transformation is a lever. It is, it is something that uh, you, if you do it, uh, all that it does is create more value. It, 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 you know, whether it's near future or far future, you know, we, we talk uh, or we read, we see on TV every day, uh, you know, whether it is uh, Tesla or solar power or great example that you gave of the the, the, the world beating pace of vaccines that is being done in India. Uh, I remember uh, not even a year back, uh, uh, I think maximum anybody had done was a million people or 4 million or 5 million people in a day. 
imagining five times the pace of that could not have happened without without uh, digital transformation that is working. Yeah, very so, so true what you say on it. Excellent, excellent. So uh, really enjoying it. So uh, another question uh, which has been asked by many actually within Alcor to me in past to our other leaders uh, as well as by, by clients often. It, you know, it's again, a seemingly simple question, but, but it's definitely loaded. <laughs> and that's how should one plan for their first step into digital transformation, you know, uh, to make sure the foundation is right and they're, they're able to, to, to be successful. And yeah, because I, I definitely believe that sequence is really important. Right. So, so, so really, what should the first step be and how, do, how does one plan for it? I mean, it's a, it's a loaded question. Honestly, it is like okay. finding that secret sauce. Right. And uh, I'll first start by first explaining that um, any company corporation team that has first decided I want to do it. Let's first look at what is that journey going to be and where we land before we look at what are the levers that I need to start and then look at where do I start as a first step, right? Because if we don't understand that, uh, uh, we won't see why am I saying that's the first step. Now, most sure. companies, even if you are digitally born, it's fascinating people say physically born companies have a bigger transformation on hand, but it's the same challenge to even digitally born companies, right? They may have just taken a one step ahead, but essentially we know which state we are in. And most likely the states may be more like uh, we have understood it's imperative to win in digital, but I am a little bit a disempowered team and I need to now take it to extremely empowered teams that are mm -hmm. making digital, call it methods, learning constantly. They have the decision rights to do it. That's when this digital is ingrained in how it gets developed, how new value gets created while solving new problems. So we all know the end state. That's what we want to land. There are two states we ought to be aware that is a pitfall in this journey so that we don't declare those to be our successes. They are important, don't get me wrong. And those two states are, one is like being hostage to technology. The standards are very important. I'm not saying no, but to get at stage comes when you have first few successes and you land yourself and, and, and kind of like uh, uh, cocoon yourself into standards, then you have stopped there. And it, so it's yes. important, but it's also important to untangle yourself to reach that end state of problem solving teams. The other state is equally very interesting in any company or government or corporations or teams, which is hostage to heroics. Don't fall into that trap. We all know that early success is important. The challenge of that is we take those, we celebrate it, and we make it so heroic that we end up getting stuck there. Now, once we know, we know that these two are important, but the journey essentially is to land where every team is empowered to keep running digitally, creating the new uh, uh, solutions to the problems. That's when it just joins one after next. So if that is a success state, because digital is going to be a disciplined journey. And the word I would introduce is discipline. Fascinating what manufacturing 50 years ago taught us that discipline is the outcome of quality. A digital transformative journey is no different. It is being disciplined on this every day. Now, once you've defined that success, which is what most companies are looking at the magic wormhole to land into the other side, and it's difficult path. Now let's look at what are the at least five levers in my opinion. And then mm -hmm. I'll talk about which is the one to start from. The sure. first is always the executive. The executive needs to be open-minded. Mm. The executive needs to get a little ahead in learning what's possible. They don't need to know the technology at depth, but what's what it's going to bring on the table and be that constantly learning attitude, right? And that is very important that we create an environment where the executive is upgrading itself to be at a little more edge not technically because our people are going to be far more on that, but to be on the possibilities to keep pulling as I call it. Right. Digital is not a push, digital is a pull. That's the first yes. vector. The second is 
to create a constantly learning organization, curious organization. This is going to be the way how the discipline fun journey is going to be. Curiosity, learning, that's a second step that we know. It's not in sequence that I'm saying, but the second, a, a second thing that is very, very important because the organization will then drive the leadership, the executive to say, this is possible. This is a problem and the leadership will pull it. So these are the two levers. The third and very important one, once we recognize this, the core IT organization, normally they start a, a few months or even a year or a few years ahead of when the other two has happened. Why? Because imagine that the rest two has happened, but we don't have the core IT, which then is ready to create. Then you start to have a disappointment from beginning. So normally the IT becomes like the catalyst and it has started to prepare itself a bit earlier. That's the third vector. Now, how do you skill uh, IT, which is so important? Your partners will play a very big role. And I'll talk about it later. That it is not about doing it yourself, but the partners that you work with, right? The fourth very, very important thing is the culture. Once we have these ingredients, then the culture of the discipline that is thriving on learning, creating new outcome, and it is living and breathing DNA of the company or an entity or a team. And the last and not the least, and very important one, possibly the first one. Remember that this is going to be about creating newer delight, newer value to the customer, consumer every day. And that is going to create a newer value to the company. And that is going to create a newer value to the employee. So now the employee has become the fulcrum, right? Yes. But it is not because we want to do for employee or with value because it is for the outcomes. Now, these are the five levers I call it of digital transformation. You will notice I have not used the word technology while the IT is leading. Yes. The technology is there in all of these parts and it's got to become the culture. Now, the last piece, then I will say that if all of these levers that you look at, which are the two levers you start with, where do you get started? I have two levers, not one. The executive leadership and the IT organization. The rest of the, call it bowling pins, will happen after that constantly. But these are the two important levers to get started. And the analogy I'll leave you with is another fascinating one, how I started my digital thinking, having learned through success and failures into the new world. It was a fascinating moment. I started to look at, let's say, the temples and how they are made. And right. I went closer and closer and realized every murti, right, which in Hindi is called murti, but they are basically the manifestations of the God or the value. But each one has a purpose. And fascinating, the closer I get, I realize they are connected, very connected. They are not built in isolation. When you step back, it creates a smaller temple. Then you step back and you realize there are a multitude of that connected. And that's what you mean by the fractal design. Now, what it means is it's infinite. Now, the point about this is, so you get started. And what you are remembering is a dual lens, as I call it. The lens of creating the value, which is there in each of the smaller, call it monument, but also the lens right. that actually the way I'm going to build is they will join to create a much bigger value. Now, I, I won't see that today. I won't see that today, but that is going to last, which is why you see those lasting for a thousand years, right? Correct. Because whoever was creating was creating the each value and digital is like that. The problem I'm going to solve is about each and every which has a value but I also know that how it will get connected to create a much different corporation entity or an outcome. This is, this is amazing, Sanjay. The, the, the analogy in itself, the, the, the importance of fractal design and thinking itself in architecture. And, and really, when we talk about digital, that's an, you, you are stitching together an architecture, uh, you know? So, so that great analogy. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, and uh, also all the five levers, each one very important, but as you rightly said, those two are the ones that, that one has to start with. Uh, and I definitely want to, uh, again, point out to, to the audience, uh, the importance of not falling into either of the two traps. Because while it seems awesome that sometimes we have heroes, uh, you know, a, a hero or two, 
uh, that saved the day. You know, that did really, really awesome. But if you make a culture of it, you moved away from discipline. And the same thing on technology, you know, uh, time and again, an awesome technology comes up, uh, you know, there was internet, right? We moved away from client server after that, right? The remote infrastructure management became a reality. Uh, then there was, uh, you know, there was mobile, uh, right? And then there were social platforms, uh, right? And, and, you know, and the march continues on. But if you get stuck in any one of those and you fall into the trap of putting that technology first, you're not building a design that lasts, you know, that period of time that it should. You know, so, so love the analogy. Very, very powerful. It will stay with me. Thank you for, for, for saying that. And thank All you for right. also building the technology analogy. You're so right. And when you took the technology angle in the same framework, it's about constantly staying ahead and that problem solving. That is why we are there and creating your value, not for the sake of it. Very, very nice. So that leads me to the next question, Sanjay. Uh, and in terms of the levers and the IT team we talked about, uh, how does one create deep skills that an IT team needs to lead this change? And, and would that be the first step? Uh, you know, I know we talked a little bit more, but I wanted to dig, you know, double click on this a little bit better in terms of how does one go about creating those skills that are needed? I mean, thanks. And uh, that is, as I mentioned, also among the two, it is a first fulcrum. But I equally said, like you are pointing to, that it's a fulcrum that starts even before the executor. Which means now there is a very big question to whatever be the IT team that one has. And it's mm -hmm. okay to have the skill sets of what mattered a few years ago. It's okay. We also need to recognize we need to develop a new ones. Equally, the Agile framework, all the other frameworks of DevOps, et cetera, fine. But the question becomes is how do we start to develop? What are the core that I get started? Now, each enterprise needs to look at what are its products and services. And that will determine some of the levers a bit differently within IT that what are my core skills that I need to get, right? Some may be very heavy web-centric on the consumer side and which matter, some may change like that, but there are some fundamental layers, at least to build a deeper set of skills so that we can start to take, and take a little leading edge of thinking. That belongs to infrastructure and today infrastructure is cloud. There is no other discussion about it, right? And, but that is clear and including some networking, a network along with that. Then the other key one is of course, um, uh, the architecture that mm -hmm. how to start architecting on a very cloud-based thinking and what would those kind of methodologies be. The third is really then uh, equally the machine learning and the AI, that how do I start to even understand that in the beginning and the core DevOps skill would be the fourth. And the yes. fifth I would say yes. is security because that's given, that is so paramount. Yes. Yes. Now those are the few fundamental layers that we build. Now, mm -hmm. it's not difficult because that's mm -hmm. one of the questions people say in the war of talent, et cetera, the knowledge is available even very easily. But what one can do is maybe inject a few talents which understand that. But what is very, very important is to create that awareness and the training to all the rest of the IT. When mm -hmm. that culture thrives of learn, it has created a decent enough foundation to now start to propel the company and say, I have my stealth weapons ready. Now what are we gonna solve, right? Bring it on, right? But that is the precursor versus saying, starting with the management and say, you are gonna give me a few million dollars to invest, then I will create something, then I will create. But that won't happen. It will be a very much like a rough ride, right? Rather a smooth yes. ride is, yes. we have taken this as part of the base, recognized up skill, but then will come some other skills. Once we've done these, then of course one can go deeper in AI, IoT, and many other technologies that are coming in. But I feel once the core IT organization has understood those few levers, then they themselves will propel as a learning organization. Now, the other key thing to remember is partners and vendors play a very big role. The world of call it 
I, you are my outsourcing partner, or you, uh, you are my that, it's gone. We are mm. co-creation. I, I have retired the word outsourcing and what we call it as co-creation. Now, this is a win-win that mm -hmm. you have certain skills. I have certain skills. We both need to up our IT tech skills and it is going to work with partnership. And in this journey, we are going to learn, create, because it's about trust. And that then creates a beautiful small ecosystem versus yes. anyone trying to solve that skill barrier by themselves. And when those entities join together, and it's, it creates a win-win-win journey. So that's what I mean by how do you start creating that? Now, once we have figured this out, the culture becomes very, very important because it's like right. any organization, and so is the tech organization where we may come from a culture that is not yet embedded, daily learning and thriving on learning and really smiling at creating experiments. But then we don't stop at experiments, what gets proven, we take it to scale, create value. And that is a constant process that we thrive in. Now, why do I say this is important? Because organization designs as we look at, whether you take functions, companies, et cetera, it used to talk a lot about structures. It used to talk about, of course, reward. They are still very, very important. It used to talk about uh, culture, et cetera. What I don't remember ever in 20 years ago saying that constant learning and thriving and upskilling is such an important part of that organization and entity and design. Now that is very, very important in IT. So, in mm -hmm. today's world, there was a world when industrial revolution one, two, and three happened. And I look back that if we are in industrial revolution four, why is it different? And I realized it is not. When let's take the first, when uh, automobile and the production, then the skills and how the whole company was developing and every, every employee was developing into how to do mass production was like right. culture. Same was in the era when let's say it was chemicals and understanding it, which created the new products. That was a time for that. Now, hence the IT organization needs to embed this culture of constantly learning, thriving, having fun on it. The rewards look different. They are not about achieving certain, you know, levels in the organization. When is my that? Uh, there is needs to be that those kind of mindset that you bring in, then you create an entity, which is a superbly powerful core. Right? Yes. And that is the culture that we want to set because the last analogy I'll give is how is this going to work in a corporation? Whatever be the size of the corporation or the team, this, mm -hmm. this is going to be your nervous system. So in the body, the nervous system actually is so important to make every limb or everything that we see from outside actually work and function. But the nervous yeah. system is never visible. It's never visible but it is connected to everything. The IT organization is the nervous system, right? It has a digital brain of its own. There are other parts of the brain of the corporation as well, but the nervous system. And then imagine what it does to the body. And that's what it's gonna do to your teams, your company, your outcomes. Our limbs can, can reach wider, but it is mm -hmm. the nervous system behind it. They do more than what I could think they could do. My legs can work better, faster because it is again the nervous system. My eyes can see sharper. My hearing, yeah. my senses, my sense, and this is a corporation, or I call it, this is a corporation. The corporation's brand management, sales, production, they are gonna work with more outcomes like a body, but the nervous system of the culture, which is never visible, you see mm -hmm. it's never visible, is the, is, the, is the IT organization. And yet that, entity has a culture to thrive in constantly learning, attaching itself, creating, solving problems, and ultimately make a winning body, which is a winning corporation. And that culture is so important because if yes. IT is run similar to some function, like when is my next promotion? What is my that? What is this? Then we have succumbed to a situation of it resembling exactly same as every other parts of the body. But you and I equally know how a body will fail if every organ starts to say, I want to be exactly same as each other. Yes. 
Very well. This is the, this is such an apt thing. Uh, and think about it. Uh, if you don't prepare the nervous system in advance, you can't you can wait for something to happen to prep it. The you know going to your going to your your point about uh, that stealth weapon, right? That 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 connective tissue that you built uh, in anticipation that something will happen, and keeping it going, keeping it keeping that learning culture going, keep on investing in that. And, and you're right, anyone can do it. And, and, but that's really the disciplined approach that it takes to, to do this. Wonderful. This, this, is, this is really, really good. And love the analogy, Sanjay. Thank you. Thank you for, for that. And I'm sure a lot of people will find uh, you know, deep value in, 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 in that thought process. Uh, so, so moving on, uh, so as a CIO, Sanjay, what do you see as the biggest challenge, you know, behind, uh, you know, creating, uh, you know, uh, these deep skills, creating an ID team that can do it? And so, so what's the biggest challenge? And then let me sort of put that on its head as well. And so, you know, essentially saying, how can that be turned as an opportunity for the future, right? As I say, never let any crisis go to waste. So, you know, the biggest challenge as well as, you know, what can be the opportunity for the future? So Amit, uh, as we have now understood, you know, what is the whole set of things that we will entail into by being in that wormhole and we are right. trying to solve all these different levers. It's fascinating. I'll tell you what I've seen as the number one challenge. It's fascinating. While everything is tough and not easy and it can look easy as you do it, my experience shows the number one problem becomes then most organizations or companies then say, start like some big strategy, big dollars are needed. We're gonna create something this and more often than not, right? And we as IT or technologists know that you never land to create that exactly big because even the users do not know what it is. And it, it is the fulcrum of the number one challenge, which is what I meant by the users don't know. Right. They don't, which means defining the problem, such a sharp problem, is the number one challenge, even today. Number one challenge. So if I take, oh, I want to digitize production. Oh, production is a large word. I have a factories, I have supply chain, I have procurement, I have planning, I have raw material optimization, I have machines. Where do I start? That's not a problem. Yeah. The production yeah. itself was not a problem. So how am I going to define at a very sharp level my problems that I'll start to solve it digitally. Take another analogy. I want to grow sales. That's not a problem. That's everyone wants every day. But right. this is so true. And yet most teams I have started by saying, I want to my brand is in trouble. My this product is in trouble. My this service is in trouble in this market. I want to grow. That's the problem. That is not the problem at all. That is lack of defining the problem. So my number one challenge is our objective is to get, get our teams sharper, so laser focused that they can come back with, I have six sharp problems. That is a very tough skill to do. Yes. Very, very yes. tough skill to, to do. To say, I have six, I have 12, but each one is sharply defined. Now, once we know that, because this requires one of the old thoughts and a fascinating one that I am a very believer in, called critical chain thinking, right? Because mm -hmm. critical chain teaches us that while everything can be improved, what is in the critical chain of solving the problem that increases the, the throughput of a team or an organization, but it also means it's about defining the problem is the core skill of it. Because until I have defined, I don't even know how is my chain looking like? And then which one do I start with? So many times yeah, the yeah. vestiges or heroics happen because we have done a great digital project and outcome, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter to the outcome of the corporation or an entity mm -hmm. or a team, whichever body you are trying to do for. I solved creating a great website, but my brand did not was not suffering because of the great website. It was suffering from, let's say, the quality of the product then what did I do by creating a great website? I actually brought this faster to the consumer 
and the brand sunk faster. Actually, <laughs> right? I always say so a, true. Bad product, a bad product with a great marketing will only teach you the lessons faster. It, it won't do anything else. It won't grow your brand. So what are you solving? So defining the problem to specificity is so important. The best analogy I can give, and I really learn from external because I believe that's how we ought to learn, was once we know that, oh my God, it is about defining the problem and I know the problems to that specificity, which is now so contained that now I'll empower the teams to say, solve it using digital, which is your lever and right. create a different right. outcome than the past. Now they know what to do and whether success or failure and then come back and we constantly learn. The greatest example, there are many in the world, and I don't say that the ones I not take are not the ones, but I'll tell you what I found fascinating about, if you, if you again look at, and I look at problems from a large country because the problems can look unsurmountable. So I don't mm. mean to say other countries don't do, but it is because the same problem thrown to one sixth of a population of the world, like if I take India, then it, mm -hmm. it looks like, where do I start? And the problem can look like a motherhood statement. Right? Yes. So I think the example of, it started with a one problem called, how do I give identity number to every individual? Mm -hmm. Because I only want to solve that problem that is secured, that even a less educated or more educated can achieve an identity number that, was, that is called Aadhaar in India, but it is mm -hmm. called social security number in US. It is called whatever in every other country. But how do I get that? It was a very contained problem, powered by technology, breathtaking technology. If you look at it, it has one of the most brilliant architectures. So there's a huge tech team working on it, including, you know, hand print, the bio prints, the eye prints that you can have behind the scene. And then you get a little foolproof identity number. Then you have other problems that they started to put very sharp. Now that I know it, how do I get a bank account number to every person? So now I use that entity of Aadhaar. Wow. I use the entity of mobile. I use, and all I do is just create a bank account. It is a yep. the sharpest problem of def problem definition. Why? Because it's a huge value. Once you get yes, an account, yes. Even a farmer or a poorest person can do something else out of it. Then comes the ecosystem of services around it. But each, each one is so sharply defined. I found it fascinating. Each one is singularly sharply defined. An example, now that I have the bank account, how do I do transfer? Right. So now I create the stack of a payment technology. It's the world's most leading payment technology stack that is only doing one piece of an outcome and problem solving transfer between the two adhars. That's all it is doing. That's all, such a powerful problem definition statement, which will have immense outcome tomorrow. Now look at India, it has become the world's leading digital, number one in digital payments, even more payments. than China. Yes. Per day. But it doesn't yes. stop there. Now when you look at services start to bloom around it. But let me now look at COVID, I'll start that back again that most recently we have seen that how do I then use an app to actually identify, register, every person can register that I want to get a vaccine, yeah? And I know who are you, so I can do precision targeting, precision delivery, pre precision confirmation that it went to you and not have a loss, and then precision certificate that you can roam around. Now, if I can and get them which location, then it is based again on Aadhaar. You see, and they are joining. But again, a singular problem of delivery of one service. Now, I come back to hence say, what is the number one, uh, as you mentioned, biggest challenge? The biggest challenge of every company is to define these problems so sharp that each one is so beautiful to a singular outcome, very tech-enabled. You, how you solve it is very tech-enabled. This is digital. Yeah, yeah. But how you are solving goes back to my temple analogy that you are not architecting in technology in such a way that each one cannot talk to each other. Because one day I know, I don't know the end point of this, but what I know is each one is going to connect and solve bigger and bigger and bigger. This is how you build a temple. And there's no end to it. 
it's the beautiful thing of a fractal design, as I call it, with digital enables. So I hope I was able to bring that theory of the temple into a practice using Aadhaar as an example. Now, why do I say this? Companies, entities who have understood this is the digital journey and empower teams with the sharpness, many other things will, will, will fall into place. Funding. The funding is only to be done for a piece of the problem. We are not funding a strategy. Yeah. We are not funding $10 million to reach somewhere. That's a waste. Believe me, if somebody gives, actually will create a waste. But that is exactly the number one challenge. I face it every day. I have, I every day get into conversation and, and scratch my head that, that how do I get to understand, all of us get to understand the sharpness of the problem. And it can be many, and I know how it connects. Now, where do I start? And this whole right. work has to be done every day, every day. And that's my number one suggestion I would give that please start with that and make that as a culture of finding the problems with the sharpness and then the rest digital will flow. Very well said, Sanjay. This is, we spend, uh, whether it's consulting, that's what Alcor does, or, uh, you know, uh, IT organizations that exist to, to serve their customers in, in, in a variety of industries. Uh, it comes down to the same thing what is the problem you're trying to solve? And, and you, know, that, you know, that becomes a question of, uh, I think the, the examples that you gave, uh, really big, humongous problems, right? Broken down into chunks that you can easily solve. I mean, it's not easily, but they're solvable. You know, you can throw technology at them. You can throw investment at them because you know exactly, you can define the problem and you can define the outcome that you're looking for singularly, right? That's, that, that's, that's extremely powerful. And you compare that to the motherhood and apple pie statement of, I want to increase my sales. I want a better brand. So let's go build a better website, right? Uh, so this, is, this really cuts to the chase of uh, uh, what defines, what differentiates a, a good organization from a great organization. And so yeah, that, that's very, very powerful. So uh, carrying on, and, and I'm really enjoying this, this discussion, uh, uh, you know, and uh, let me ask you, uh, how do you plan to create, uh, or how should one plan to create a change resilient culture? Uh, you know, because change, uh, and, and you know, I've talked to many CIOs, uh, many other leaders in IT about this, that when, uh, when things change, uh, there's the phrase of OCM, organizational change management becomes a, a big thing. So really, I mean, the, the thought becomes, well, why don't we build a change resilient culture? A culture that, that actually, instead of resisting change, is able to absorb more and more change, doesn't break when change happens. And, you know, and, and thus then driving successful change communication uh, and implementation strategies, right, across the entire organization, you know. So, and, and obviously to add to that, how do you avoid falling back into the old habits, right? Instead of transforming forward. Uh, you know, I've got another question on that, but would love for your, your views on that. Amit, you, you are nailing it because even when we get started, one of the biggest barriers we face or call it like, we feel like we are swimming, but the current is against us versus yeah. the current behind us, right? And that is because of the change. Now, I won't talk about the change management because that is a very well understood theory and a subject and right. everyone has their own experiences. One of the most important thing we have to be aware as leaders that we are dealing with humans, including myself. It is very fascinating observation that we as humans want everything else to change, to bring me the best product best services where I am sitting now to ease my life, but I want to sit where I am. Yes. <laughs> now, this is a dichotomy. This is, so once we understand this, and me included, once we understand, nobody can say, oh, he or she is not changing. Actually, I am also not changing. We have to understand that our DNA is built like that. Now, once we understand, there is a word called empathy, which I really love. 
because that brings it to the leadership instead of thinking there are change resistance and that's a problem and a person is a problem it starts to create that change is inbuilt in our dna in each one of us to resist right so how do i create an environment that reduces this resistance change management we know but the other piece that people are really afraid of what digital and how it has been talked about so it has created a paranoia that my job will be lost i will be redundant so now you have the fear and the fact that human evolution started or any living being evolution of protecting yourself and what you have done is handed a sword that is dangling every day and someone uses a, another interesting word which i dislike called productivity now people have understood the word productivity as cutting people mm-hmm. the word yes. productive if i take away organization in our saturday life when we say hey let's be productive we don't understand productivity as taking off my the meaning <laughs> of the word productivity has gone wrong productivity is about how can i be more efficient i want to create more outcome by spending less energy that is right. the definition so that is the kind of culture you want to create that is the culture i i constantly remind myself that i want to create once that bedrock is there in communication and actions thinking it percolates as a thinking the resistance starts to go lesser and lesser and lesser and in digital this is even more important now why because there is a collective win the collective win is not to take out anybody the collective win is as i solve the problem i meaning as a team and as an entity not me as a person we gonna be teams of constant learners who are more skilled and hence right. have more value market value internally and externally none of us are hence call it living in a fear we are actually creating bigger outcome of the corporation better products so yes it is also true that my current work that i am doing may change but i am going to do something better right yes. and once that dna starts to get established in in talk communication action how decisions are done you essentially take away the current and that is such an important part now easy to say very difficult to do right uh, uh, but this has to be remembered and the other coin i will equally give is it is still okay that a, a group might be very very still call it stiff now we'll have to deal with that right uh, which i may talk about later but essentially recognizing that some of those old words need to be removed from the thinking mm-hmm. it's not about removing from the language re talking that that what what productive means is about creating e- better outcomes by doing easier i get skilled i'm creating more outcome so i'm going to get to even higher things to do because every one of us is thriving it is win 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 then right. that's the dna and that's what i always say about change that especially in digital transformation it's more important because we used to even in my early career transformation was once in three years we have a mega project we do a massive change management and then we go through its whole change management cycle then we do another change after three years now we are living where every day a new change is possible right. and our teams are creating it so the only way is that this is the dna and it's constantly winning together and that when created it's fascinating how our teams actually thrive on it majority at least thrive on it right and uh, i have had experiences of creating those teams also has had difficulties in creating those so i'm not saying it is easy cultures come into a very important play right mm-hmm. but again i'll close this by saying it starts by understanding that change doesn't belong to anywhere else it is built into our dna so it's a very empathetic process including okay. self in the picture and that changes the discussion and environment a, a, a culture of not being at least big resistors but each one from executive all the way down to be 
thriving on it because it's a win together, it's a lose together. And when people see that it's, a, it's not a you win and I lose, we will lose together, we will win together, you have taken away the dynamics, at least major part of the dynamics out of it because there is no imperative. Every day the change will happen. Yeah. So the only imperative is to live like that. So that's possibly how I explain without going into change management theory because that everyone has learned. Um, yes. To the success or failure. What are the other theories I apply to this? But I believe in the culture because that culture removes all these other theories out of the equation or makes it superbly easy. Very, very good point. And 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 you know, you actually answered the next question I had on that, which is which was part of the earlier one talking about it. It isn't just a strategy. It, it's really that, uh, in fact, you said that uh, the the only imperative is the change is going to happen every day, and and you know you have to you have to live with with the change as a win win or lose lose. There can really be no win lose. And once you have that and and, and empathy as as part of your uh, you know uh, organization's culture. Uh, you start building a change resilient culture, a culture that thrives on change, that that welcomes it instead of uh, uh, resisting it. And uh, yeah, the, the the analogy about human DNA, uh, you know, just being so deeply ingrained in us that we want everything to change except ourselves. Uh, that you know, that's uh, that's a lesson that I think uh, all of us will do very well to remember. So 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 thank you uh, for that. Uh, 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 got a couple more questions uh, in, in, in a similar vein as we end towards closing. Uh, one of them is, what strategy would you opt for uh, for minimizing resistance uh, to the adoption of such transformation or say introducing a new technology, for example? There are two kinds of resistance I'll say besides the other things I've talked about, right? And I didn't right. mention the change. And not to be naive that the first one is about there'll always be some team or a person that is superbly resistant. Now, what in this cannot happen is that team or a culture can live in that, right? Constantly, because what's gonna happen is it will slow the speed of everybody else, right? So I'm equally a believer right. that while that happens, you have to deal with it versus let it just live with it, right? Correct. And, uh, Having a very transparent discussion, again, constantly, both sides of what change I talked about and, and how the DNA is, and yet it's the pitfalls that no, we can't be letting it be how it is. And that transparency versus many times we leave it as it is saying it, it's gonna die, actually will slow it down. So that equally yes. the tough love, as I call it, the tough love yes. has to happen, right? And then at core decision has to be done. So and the, the equally the opposite currents has to be equally dealt as much as you are creating a current that is together flowing, right? And that is the first one that I would say about minimizing the resistance that you have to deal with it and, and deal yes. with it as, as, as you deem it to be, but you have to and not let it linger. The other one I would say is very interesting of what creates some kind of a resistance is financial. Now, this is very interesting. Many of the companies and teams may be small. What they have available is minimal financial resource. Mm -hmm. So not big. So they have large. And then what happens is actually it is fascinating. I'll share from my experience. Both think they have a problem. The small think that actually they will Roger and they, they have a problem. The big thing Actually, the small are better. It's very fascinating insight I'll give. And that learning, that, that resistance that we have is how do you fund anything financially? And it goes back to my simplest theory that even if you are big, please never fund a big strategy because it's a sure shot way to wastage and failure and, 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 and land something in a, in a bad state. In fact, you ought to operate like, like a small company, which is a music to a small company that every problem gets so sharply defined, which I talked about, that you actually fund for that and then you create the outcome and it creates, call it new value. So 
it's a self-fulfilling prophecy of that spiral you are in. Now, even when, when you do, some companies I have seen that grew from startup to decently big, and you start to realize that they are falling into the trap of the failure point which a large corporation has, which is now you start to fund big strategies versus again going back to problem definition. So the answer lies is the second resistance which we end up creating, which is one, ideally we think that, oh, we are small or big, so we, we fund or we don't fund, or how can I fund? But it is very simple answer of creating digital solutions joined together, and that becomes a transformation of yes. bigger value. You and your bigger muscle over time, but never forget the DNA of this, which is be like a small company in hunt of problem, even if you become very big. Right. That is the second call it resistance because that is a self created resistance in our mind, or either because of lack of money or because of too much availability of money. And there is no right answer into that. It is just after the problem and always be in scarcity of money and resources. You actually answered on the question that was uh, in Q&A and something that I get asked a lot about, uh, you know, uh, especially in Silicon Valley, a lot of startups, a lot of product companies coming up and, 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 you know, internal IT organizations almost always saying, I don't have enough funds to get this done as well as I'd like to. Uh, I got to stretch my dollar much more, right? So, uh, this this is a great answer about it because you can you can do wastes both ways right now first one obviously you acknowledge you it has to stretch but that makes you think harder and define the problem better and but the other end that is equally uh, in fact I would say even more so uh, important that if you if you have a large organization uh, you have to define the problems even sharper because you know the, the examples we gave right all of them increase my sales. So let's put a new ERP system. Let's go spend, you know, $100 million, right? Or increase my sales. Well, let's design a new branding camp. You know, let's build a new website. Uh, poorly defined, uh, you know, problems will lead to a lot of wastage, much easier, uh, you know, wastage on that. So so that that's awesome. Uh, one more question around, uh, uh, around uh, really about, uh, you know, the... Uh, the, from, a, from a perspective of closure, Sanjay, I mean, I've got actually another uh, question here. And let's probably ask that first. Uh, actually, a couple of these here uh, are here. So first was about, uh, the. Uh, this was very specific to actually the Indian example that you gave. Uh, and the question is, how do you foresee uh, the pace of digital transformation in Indian healthcare or public health sector? Uh, now that India has their own HIMSS, right, health and you know, information ministry, can we, you think uh, we will be able to implement or create, you know, uh, standards that are as good as international classification standards, et cetera? Uh, or do you think we'll actually end up doing better than that? This is a great question, and it is a little bit forward looking. So I always say that I'm a very bad predictor. Uh, uh -huh. The world changes so much, right, that I, uh, uh, call it like never say, say that, okay, I, I know what the outcome is, but I can tell you something, right? That why I believe it will, it will. And it goes back, I always look at near history to say how is it has been done. So whether success or failure, but is it an organization that is learning and pivoting? And if mm -hmm. the answer to that is yes, then I know that there is a better probability such an organization will create a better outcome even for a new problem given. Now with that as a backdrop, healthcare is one of the most important things that has come out of COVID. And the great news is at the right time, digital is given, but governments have realized, people have realized that there is magic to be done, right, in healthcare. So I'm very confident that one, this problem is, and we are seeing that with the number of startups or government initiative, and you need both, right? And you need the big corporates, Everyone is trying to disrupt that space. So one, I'm very confident of the attention because in the past, it, one could have said, and it's true for many countries. I don't want to say here yes. India or this, but Absolutely. Uh, this yeah. issue for any government. But it, since you asked about India, the problem will be, is now being dealt, at least taken seriously, not just as a, some form of political or this or that. The second, 
their approach I have seen from a distance about how they dealt with Aadhaar and services, how they dealt with COVID, um, uh, and what was the what was the purpose of an app? What was the purpose? Of of the contact tracer, what was the purpose of this? Each one was sharp. Now, I believe because of that, they will equally create healthcare with that clarity of problem purpose with heavy digital in. We've also mm -hmm. seen it is the best architectural stack that I've ever seen in many other components that were done. So they would put the same on, on healthcare. That gives me a confidence. So I'm not trying to predict like general prediction. There'll be right, pitfalls right, right. in the way. But I truly believe there is going to be a new better way. How payments taught that no, what you don't do is what the world was doing. What India created is because India is the only place where you have to deal with, it has to work large. So it has to right. be cost damn effective, which means technology has to be the biggest lever that anyone else in the world will use. Trust me, yep. because that's the only way. So in the healthcare, the same will happen. And we are going to see certain, there'll be newer standards. I'm always a believer that standards have been one of the biggest problems. What the past models of healthcare has done. So there will equally be in this process, a newer set of standards that will come out and how they are determined versus four or five bodies who somehow give because they are prone to corruption. Right? I'll be transparent on that. Like there are still questions about COVID origin, this, did the body, so who are setting the standards? Now, what I mean is I don't want to go into that domain of politics, but or geopolitics, but if I look at it, they are right to be disrupted into what a standard ought to be. And I'm Absolutely. very confident that a new way of approaching standard, which gives trust. Why is there a standard? If you now go to the crux of the problem, a standard is supposed to give trust to a person and billion of a person. There's no other reason for standard to exist because people are damn intelligent. Yep, they, yep. they know that if it works for me, whether you qualified it in a laboratory or not, my trust is there and the standard was a means to give that trust. What happened over time, standards became means to achieve some other objective. And I go back to the crux of the problem. So I believe there'll be new standards. It's not about will we attain those standards. I think there'll be new standards and newer healthcare way to come personally to me, which, which mechanisms of COVID has taught. So net net to your question, I am very, very uh, probabilistically, uh, I can bet it that the healthcare is gonna change. Uh, don't expect. And my last statement will be, I love what Bill Gates had once said that uh, we over expect a change or a benefit in one year time. We as humans grossly under wow. under expect or predict the change that happens in 10 years. So in one year, we feel disappointed that this should have happened, that should have happened, it didn't happen. But in 10 years time, we actually, all of us underestimate that what that fulcrum did. Trust me, like what Aadhaar at 10 years later would do. Similarly, the healthcare movement 10 years later, right? If you go back, it was only in 2007, if I'm not wrong, when the iPhone came, which was a mix of technologies. It brought the mobile into the hand, not that they invented, but it brought it in an easy way. We are only right. 14 years later. What do you do? The whole marketplace of Amazon and everything is all because of that change. Now, did That's we right. expect that? Were we disappointed with the first version? I remember with the antenna problems. Does anyone still remember that there was when Steve Jobs was still there? There was an antenna yes. problem, and there was all this, and we were discussing with the expectations within one year and underwhelming issues. 13 years later, 14 years later, the world has changed. How social media, the, they are all born and brought up because of that form factor of a mobile, right? Um, so that is what I mean, that same in healthcare, what's gonna happen. That's awesome, Sanjay. I mean, there are, there are more questions, but I know we are almost at the end. So I would, I would want to ask as a closure, uh, what is one advice that you would give to make digital 
core to driving value for companies? There's only one word, not even an advice, discipline. So as you would have seen by whole, this is one out of my experience, what we were chatting about, failures and successes. They are not born out of always successes. In fact, most of the time we learn and I have learned through my failures. Yes, that's, thank discipline, you for, for saying that. Awesome. It's the hardest thing to do. It is the hardest thing to do because you have to keep doing the digital transformation every day, that culture every day, that executive coaching and uh, 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 furthering the, the understanding. All the levers have to be done every day. The nervous system has to breathe and connect every day. And that requires discipline. They beat at a frequency every day, 24 by 7, 365 days a year for years. And that is the toughest thing to do. So if there's one advice, stay course. Stay course. We may learn and fail, but it is staying course on that discipline is the biggest thing that makes a difference between a winning digitally transformative company and the losing digitally transformative company. There is no other reason what separates. Other factors kept the same, right? And uh, this is very, very important. And companies who do that create bigger value. Yes. And companies who don't do that can create a value at a point in time and then go like this and can again, or it's not about companies, also teams, et cetera. And I can assure you on it, this journey of discipline is fun, fun. Even after 27 years, when I come 7 a.m. in office and I can be as energetic as uh, about 12 midnight, and I can do this for even longer hours because there is a fun component in it, right? And that journey yes. is fun. When it is fun, then that discipline becomes fun. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and that is such an amazing feeling that you go every day. When you are driving back home, you just have a smile on your face, even if your day was a bad day, right? But I can assure you, if anyone decides to undertake this, it's a damn good fun. It's like steroids inside. And that's what everyone wants. So I equally want to share, um, uh, I applaud you as Alcor Tech to have undertaken this kind of a talk for a reason that you are equally trying to create that culture of understanding, learning through each other. And I think uh, that's the way, which was part of what I said about how this whole thing works and constant learning. And thank you. Thank you for uh, creating this environment. Of course, Sanjay, th this was great. Uh, thank you for giving us your time today, answering our questions, and, and for such a great discussion. I mean, awesome analogies that the, the points about you know, digital transformation being a lever, uh, not just a strategy. The, the, the whole, you know, we, we went around about from value to to how to create it, the, the issues that one faces, you know, between between heroic and, and you know, the traps that one has to avoid internally as well as externally. Uh, this was a very well thought out session and and definitely I'm sure gave the entire audience a lot to think about, uh, for sure me personally. And, uh, you know, <laughs> there are many other questions. It wouldn't surprise me if you and I maybe meet up again. Okay and have another you know, conversation around some of these follow-up questions that I'm sure will be coming our way. So real pleasure hosting you today for this session. And I'm sure our audience would have had a great time learning as well. So uh, many thanks uh, from, from all of us at Alcor. I enjoyed it equally and really thank you and all of you. And I wish you all the best for the journey. Appreciate that. And I leave this one word as it's fun. And with that, thank, uh, you. thank you so much. Wonderful. And to the audience, uh, thanks again, everyone, for joining us today for this great interactive session with Sanjay. Taking a leave from here, but we'll meet soon again for our next session on October 12th, when uh, one of us Alcorians would again be moderating uh, uh, another interactive informative session. Stay tuned for more updates. Uh, this is Amit Singh signing off. <laughs>